Hello, everyone. Welcome to our 32nd video session. Um, today, we're going to solve a challenge for the Love for Immigrants founder, Maribel Rodriguez. Um, but before we get started with that, let me just introduce Impaction um, a little bit. But ultimately, we're an enterprise that inspires and supports people to create a change in their local communities. Um, so we're encouraging young people to step up and um, lead uh, social change for their respective communities. Um, we're just going to go through um, some introductions um, of the people on this call before we get started. Um, I'm Shivani, one of the co-founders of Impaction. I'm based in Chicago, Illinois, um, and I'm interested in the education inequality sector. Um, Sukanya, do you want to go next? Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Sukanya, one of the co-founders of Impaction. I'm based in Dallas, Texas. I'm, in, I'm interested in improving the lives of disabled people. Bella, do you want to go next? Um, Bella is actually going to wait until um, she gives her presentation. So, um, Bethany, do you want to go next? Sure. Hi, I'm Bethany. Um, I'm based in Washington, D.C. And um, my main focus areas are like immigrant and migrant rights um, and like kind of program evaluation. Thank you. Um, Saja, do you want to go next? Sure. Hello, everyone. My name is Saja Osman. I'm from Jordan. And uh, me and Siwa are the co-founders of a design studio called Devolve. We work with impact organizations around the world to help them create more design-centric materials that achieve better communication for them. Thank you. Uh, Siwar, do you want to go next? Hello, uh, I'm Siwar. I'm uh, based in Amman, Jordan. I'm the co-founder with Saja and the Valve Studio. Thank you. I'm uh, Jasmine, do you want to go next? Sure. Uh, so my name's Jasmine. I'm in Dorado, Texas, and I guess working right now in higher education, transitioning over to pre-K to 12. Thank you. Uh, Kayla. Sure. Hey, um, I'm Kayla. I am Chicago-based, and I'm currently studying documentary filmmaking at my school. I don't have a particular interest of what I'm interested in, but just that I'm interested in, like, um, helping people make an impact around the world through visual means. Awesome, thank you. And, and uh, Maribel, I'll give you a brief introduction and then you can go on and introduce yourself and then go into the presentation. Um, but today, as we all know, we're um, solving a challenge for Maribel Rodriguez, the founder of Love for Immigrants. Um, Love for Immigrants is a platform that creates and inspires people to capture the value that immigrants bring in a positive and dignified way. Um, so Maribel, do you want to introduce yourself very briefly and then just go into your presentation? I'll let you take it away. Sure, thank you. My name is Maribel Rodriguez. I am based in Washington, D.C., but I'm from Brooklyn. Uh, in terms of social impact, I got my master's recently, like a year ago, in social entrepreneurship and my undergrad and some of my experiences with photography. So this is how Love for Immigrants came about, um, this visual representation of, of immigrants. And uh, I am a generalist, a lot of other things, part of which I teach social entrepreneurship for Learn Serve International, um, who serves high school youth in the D.C. area. So let me share my screen with you all. Give it one second. My computer can be a little bit slow. If you have any questions about anything while I get this started, feel free to ask and I'll multitask. So I'm actually really glad to be on the other side. I'm usually part of Impaction as someone who listens and gives feedback to social entrepreneurs. And this is the first time I present a little something about Lauren, so it's great to be on the other side. Um, yeah. 
So I'll start with um, sharing this quote by Bill Drayton. Um, Social entrepreneurs in particular are driven from deep within to serve the good of all, and therefore so is their work. It is therefore critical that the sources of support not contradict the central compass setting. So why I wanted to share this uh, particular quote is because I really hope that the revenue generating strategy focuses more on the community and the impact of the work as opposed to being the time being being eaten away by, you know, only fundraising or only selling products or selling the service. So um, it is part of what focuses my work. Um, and this logo idea is from Valve. Uh, so Warren Soja helped me create the idea. So I went ahead and tr attempted to create it. So we'll see. This is the one that won the most um, votes when I shared it with the Instagram Love for Immigrants community. So, oops, not that one yet. I hit myself. So part of why um, Love for Immigrants started, my personal connection to uh, to this project is my mom. My mother is an immigrant from Colombia. Um, she uh, came and migrated to New York City, and I personally saw how much value she brought to her own community. Uh, and she's worked with kids for so many years, so I saw how how much she was appreciated, and um, and also traveled to Colombia like nine times growing up. So I had first experience with a country outside of the US and how we could also learn from other countries. So um, when I was starting grad school in 2016, uh, there were a lot of moments where I heard negative rhetoric uh, surrounding the immigration theme um, or hateful speech. And this contradicted my own experience with immigrants and also contradicted some of the facts, even taking economics and seeing how in the long run, countries actually really uh, benefit from having immigration uh, policies that are a little bit more open because there's much more innovation and actually in some cases, even um, a decrease in violence. So um, I therefore created the project for my capstone grad school project, Love for Immigrants, to balance out a little bit of that rhetoric because the, the way of telling the story with um, bringing immigrants into the picture as human, um, sharing their aspirations, sharing their contributions, um, I thought was really a strong way to show their dignity and to share with others who may not realize or may not be exposed or even bring solidarity within the community. Um, so I initially was inspired by Humans of New York. Many of you may have heard of them. They're also a photo essay project and they capture short summaries um, and portraits. Um, as well as uh, the Fine American, the Fine American, which is a media company, also uh, trying to shift that narrative to more positive and factual one. Uh, and not to mention Tweedin, who was my mentor, um, created a participatory uh, documentary project uh, when she had community at the forefront of what she did. So this is really inspiration for the artistic side of my work because the social enterprise side of my work is um, is also something I want to add to it in addition to the movement building piece. And many social entrepreneurs, including the Shoka Fellows, have a movement piece included. So I definitely want to keep that part. Um, so I think I was going to put something in there and actually did not. OK, <laughs> so let me share part of the photo essay. Um, the first theme is called Life Journeys, and this is where I include individual stories of immigrants. And uh, part of the series, I have three series. One is Survivor, the other one is Businesswoman, and the third one is Family. 
Um, in a survey I did, many people resonated with families, so maybe have to do more of those. Um, and this is a theme called solidarity, where I captured activities that immigrant serving organizations did or captured their process. So um, I want to give you all time to speak. So I'm going to skip this one, but I worked with Latinos in Foco, Ayuda, um, and Karasin. And You can go to the website and find out more. Uh, but the idea of the website is for it to serve as a time capsule to hold the stories for future generations of people, and specifically Americans, to see. Um, and I'm going to skip the details a little bit. And. Okay, I got to thank you. Thank you so much for listening to Love for Immigrants, what it's about, um, what we hope to do. Our ideal is to inspire other people to join the effort, uh, inspire other artists to join and tell positive stories of immigrants as well um, as community feel very empowered and appreciated. Um, and it, I guess, in terms of specific milestones we hope to reach, our main milestone, which we have not reached, would be a large display. Um, I mean, think advertising large. Uh, and we've had a smaller exhibit with Ayuda. So, so that's a little bit about us. Thank you so much. I will stop sharing my screen. Thank you, Maribel. Um, so, like for something that I got from your presentation was that it's a, really about empathy building, but um, you're also calling for people to share stories about immigrants. Um, so can you tell us like a little bit about the mode that you're trying to use? I mean, through social media and you're also thinking about advertising um, in a way, but what's something that we can do to help promote your message? Oh, I love that. So uh, right now, the the best way to help promote is to do things within your own community with that same love for immigrants, right? Whether, whatever that means to you, um, as meaningful as it is to you, to have leaders within, you know, their own neighborhoods, their own cities, um, develop their own creative process or develop their own ideas further. So whether that is if you're an artist and you do a documentary film, uh, do a short 60 second documentary film and share it with Love for Immigrants and share it with, you know, different people uh, who, who would benefit from seeing this. Um, if you're if, if you're not particularly an artist, but you have a way to contribute, whether that's um, transcribing interviews, I always am looking for people to help with that or whatever you feel, if it's just being a connection and knowing about us and when you hear of something happening in your area, saying, hey, this organization exists, maybe you'd like to partner. Um, so those are the kind of things that we hope to do. Uh, but if you go on the website, we have a lot of detailed instructions, or not instructions, but just like a guide of what you can do, or simply even donate to organizations in the area and share our stories with them so they can feel that moral support. Great, thank you. So um, we're gonna move into the challenges portion. Um, so the first one is uh, more about your business model um, for the organization. So can you tell us a little bit about what you're thinking for your business model and how we can help you? Yeah, so um, initially I was thinking this, I haven't seen as much, but it's it was like a mix of um, open source where people can share the, and contribute the skills that they have um, to the organization, or not organization, to this Love for Immigrants movement. I was trying to create it more as a movement. Um, and I share my photography skills and 
whatever skill people have, they would share and they would become larger and larger. Uh, I'm seeing that takes a special kind of skill. And so having a specific maybe business model in addition to the movement building piece, whether it's starting a nonprofit um, with that or finding some other way of uh, generating revenue that, that might work, um, that's something I'm considering or some kind of mixed uh, mixed form. Let me know if this is confusing because I know I was sharing it with someone else and they were a little bit confused. So if there's any way I can clarify what I mean or what I'm looking for, let me know. I'll let you guys um, ask your questions. I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> Um, actually, actually one question before, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> um, with the nonprofit uh, branch, what, um, well, social enterprise branch, you said that you want to build a business model as well as, um, spreading your movement. So, um, can you tell us about why you think that a, building a social enterprise or an organization might help your movement, um, and is your primary goal furthering your movement or sustaining it or um, ultimately just lead us through the thought process about why you would want to create an organization in the first place. Okay, um, that's a great question. I think part of it is I'm seeing there are there are parts of the um, you know sharing skills that can that can happen. Um, and that would be that you wouldn't necessarily need a business model for that. But then there are other parts of the of the project where you would need to, you know, pay people to value their work, especially if you're, um, I don't know, hiring a consultant for some specific help that my initial network may not may not have um, the knowledge in. So in those cases, it would be really helpful to have some kind of income coming in, um, for it to be a little bit more financially sustainable. Um, and even qualifying for grants, so in terms of nonprofit work, there might, well, I heard there are some grants in the immigration field. So um, that would be one way to, to get funding um, to continue to work in, in, in a more, um, uh, what is it, to be able to continue the work. Um, in a more full time way or without having to, I mean, personally, um, uh, just invest in it myself. And I think it, if it's financially sustainable, we'll be able to do more, more quickly. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and I know, like, you're cutting in and out, but I think, like, you mostly said that, um, like in order to be financially sustainable, in order to grow the movement, um, you would need something to help further the income, get government grant and funding. Um, right. So you would be able to like help further like the image of the community and beyond. Um, right. So, or even here in DC, there's a project called there's oral history um, organization which gives funding. For for these kinds of projects, and I think uh, I think I have to look again. They, they may need you to be a nonprofit. Yeah. The, um, so I think the main benefit to doing be, going the nonprofit route would definitely be in terms of grant funding. But I know you said you don't really want to be reliant on having to like constantly fundraise, which is always the downside of using that kind of model. And so it was really funny when you were describing how you kind of thought of it. The first thing I was thinking about is Humans of New York and wondering what model they use. And then you mentioned that that was kind of part of the inspiration. And so I would guess that they're probably operating on more of like an ad revenue revenue um, platform just because they're mostly like social media based, although I do think they did do like a book. Um, so I'm wondering if it kind of depends on what your end goal is, because if your end goal is to raise awareness for this 
um, movement, then the nonprofit model may be more logical because you're not necessarily looking for it to be like a full-time job. Um, if you more want to like raise awareness for artists and immigrants and these different communities, then I think you wouldn't maybe need as much overhead. But I think if you're look, trying to make it more of a self-sustaining model where people can potentially like make a little bit of money from their art and that can propel them to do something else, then maybe a more social enterprise based or a model where you can sell something and not have to worry so much about um, various tax aspects maybe would be better. And I think there's probably a lot of ways that this sort of platform could make money, not necessarily make money to like have a lot of money, but more make money to like be self-sustaining and have some even products you could sell. But I would guess that ad revenue maybe would be a good, I don't know a ton about it, but I think that may be a good jumping off point is kind of following another campaign that went that sort of a route. So that may be something to talk to um, someone who knows a little bit more about that concept. But I think, yeah, deciding if you want to be reliant on grant money um, really kind of comes down to what your end like output and how, um, like how you want to get there in terms of... Right yeah, movement building or um, more of like a self-sustaining model, if that makes sense. And I know that's like the big decision you're trying to make, but I think it it's going to be, I don't know, relying on grant funding is hard. And there, I'm sure are grants for this, but grant writing and grant funding is such a complicated process anyway. And I think um, it's going to just continue to get harder to like rely on that kind of funding. So an alternative right. may be better since those are starting to exist. Yeah, there, there is a, I guess there, there are um, these, I, I want to say contradicting like, thoughts initially. It was like um, a thought of, hey, maybe artists are so excited about and passionate about this project that they're willing to donate some pieces um, of work as it relates to immigration. And working with, this year, one thing I, the, I guess I did, but the pro it's not reflecting the project yet, was I formed a friendship with an artist who got a, a small amount of funding and she was able to, to do work for its immigration. And that made me think, wow, if I had, you know, at least that amount of money, which is not a whole lot, um, if you think about the effort that goes in to the work, I mean, weeks and weeks, um, it's about $500. Um, how many artists would we be able to support and also artists you know have picking that field in general is, is not the most lucrative so um th there are a lot of thoughts about the the consequence of their of their efforts and and being on the end of you know we want to be able to have people come in whether they come from privilege or not because i'm thinking maybe someone that's not just not stable financially at the moment might not be able to get even if they want to. So, so these are the kind of thoughts I have. So I thank you, Bethany. Or even Bob, right? Bob uh, had a great idea and it'd be great to pay Bob for some services or, or you know, any graphic designers who, who would like to build a logo for us. It was a simple thing like that. Uh, one thing that I would like to uh, say on top of what Bethany said is um, like to understand like what, something that she said that was really important was understanding your end goal. Um, so you have to, there are two different goals, like types of goals that you can set. One is like more empathy building or like more abstract goals versus more tangible goals. So when it comes to abstract goals, that's like an example is the empathy building, understand, understanding immigrants' perspective, like that's that's a component. But tangible goals can be direct impact, where ways that you're going to actually measure the social impact that you bring to the community, right? So that can be financial, um, which is something that Humans in New York kind of does with creating, like making a book about people who are um, living in New York and whatnot. So like financial can be an example for you can be, okay, do you want to feature artists on your platform where if you um, people can buy directly from your platform and then 
um, a majority of those sales will go directly to the artist. Um, so that can be a financial goal. Um, if you wanted to uh, create like more of a legal or like a policy driven goal is you can start petitions um, and work with the government to, I don't know, like instill type of some type of like immigration policy. That's like more you have to know like very powerful people and whatnot and gather like a huge movement to do that. But that can be a goal. So there's like a difference between intangible and tangible goals and you can have both. But it's about setting priorities on, OK, this is going to be my end result, my goal in the next six months, one year, two years, three years, five years. Um, and then that'll set your vision for what you want to do and whether or not you want to even go towards the tangible route is something that you have to understand, like that you'll have to understand. Um, and also just to notice, like, who are the other people in the space that are based in D.C., that are based in the U.S., that are doing these kinds of things, trying to see what their mission is and then to see how you can carve out a space for yourself if there is one. That's really important to see as well. So not only, like, get ideas from other people, and maybe you can replicate someone's model to make it specifically DC specific um, to help people in your local community, um, which is effective in itself. Um, and it's just about like setting your goals from the very beginning and they can change. Like it's not like they're not going to change. They're bound to change um, the more you evolve as an entrepreneur. Um, but it's about setting it right from the beginning. Right. The, the project's aim is more of a, I guess, like you said, an empathy building tool. Um, so people uh, can really just see the contributions and, um, and aspirations and value immigrants are bringing. Uh, so far, it's serving as a solidarity tool within the immigration community as well. Um, more than that, I feel like when I did the um, survey, some people said, you know, as an immigrant, I have more hope for the future. So in a way, it's, it's also like a message of hope. But um, the, the idea is for people to also see the, the work and not limit themselves to just understanding people, to also go out there and vote um, for leaders that will respect immigrants. You know, that, that is a hope. Um, right now, it's not the action oriented goal that we have um, and I guess future collaborations with some movement building organizations might work out for that piece. There's, a, there's an organization here that does that kind of work but they only mainly work with undocumented immigrants so that was sort of my hesitance. If, if I could add on to that conversation, this makes me think of the difference between like um, social justice efforts and like change making or social innovation. I think one of the things that ties me back to social innovation and change making is that there's this focus on accountability and how are we measuring our impact. Um, one of the things, I don't know if I could share my screen. Uh, da, da, da because it, it's a really good resource that we're thinking about. Um, I don't know if you could, can you see my screen by any chance? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Can you see the, in the, the system we want to blah, 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 blah. Can you see that section? Yes. Okay, great. So our, in our, um, so I work in higher ed and we're trying to find, uh, I guess, resources that are available to students. And this is one that I particularly like because it forces us to kind of think about what we want to do with the system. Like, are you trying to add to the narrative? It seems like you're trying to change the narrative for immigrants. Um, and then it, it asks you to think about what you're trying to influence. So is it resources? Is it a role, relationship or role? And um, it's just a bunch of worksheets, but um, it actually breaks it down, like what aspects. So kind of um, adding on to what Shivani was saying, like, are you um, trying to influence the resources that it, are available for the immigrant community, the roles they have, maybe the relationships or rules, results, et cetera, et cetera. But I just thought this might be worth sharing as you're thinking about 
what direction you're wanting to go um, with your project and, and how you maybe want to uh, measure your impact and, and articulate the kind of change that you're wanting to to influence through Love for Immigrants. Thank you. Uh, I'm happy to to read a little bit more about the information in your resource. Um, I do have some strategic planning information. I didn't want to bore you all with. Um, it's something I don't talk as much about, um, but I can send it your way and, and get more like specific feedback from you if that's okay. Absolutely. I think I'm one of the weirdos that loves strategic planning. Okay, great. And it seems like Bethany too, because she's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should have shared more of that. I, I wish. Well, let's see how much time we have. To see what that can be for that. another conversation. Yeah. I think getting like a more broad outline um, for okay. the general public is probably a good place to start. And then us strategic planning nerds can, can go from there. So I'm, I'm glad you, you spoke about, both two people spoke about metrics and how you're, you're measuring impact. Um, I think initially I was measuring impact by just seeing the outputs um, because it's so difficult to measure like how it really impacts the community and the ecosystem. So I was going that way, like, okay, I had one exhibit, I have like seven stories, I have a website, I have blogs, et cetera, et cetera. And Valve, Valve's consultancy was amazing. So let me just do a little brief commercial there. Uh, they, they really helped me understand that question about what people are feeling in the survey could be a really powerful uh, metric for understanding the impact. So from those people who viewed the project, how did they feel? And I was really overwhelmed with the, I only have four respondents, but I'm, I'm planning to follow up and get more. Even from the four, it was, I almost cried because it was just so beautiful. It's like, well, I have hope now uh, for the future. And, and it was two questions. One was, how is the purpose meaningful to you? And the other one was about emotions. And in terms of emotions, someone mentioned it about very human. And that was something else, a conversation about um, Sewa and, and Sasha, we were having about how sharing the humanity with others will help other people see their own humanity, which in hope, there will also be decreased violence towards immigrants because a part of the violence is people are not able to understand themselves, right? And so um, surveys for now will, will be the way it will measure um, and maybe in the future more in-depth interviews. Hey, I don't know if it's just me, but like you're cutting in and out. But no. I think I think the problem is is that video and audio at the same time might be a challenge. So I think maybe for now, if you can t turn off your video and then see if it, yeah, see if it's better. I think it sh that should solve the problem. But we would love Can to. Can you hear me now? Yeah, much better. Okay. Much better. So uh, we'll be measuring through surveys and asking questions about how the project's meaningful, as well as what kinds of emotions they experience when they see the photographs and read the stories. So the way that you're going to collect your data is going to be more qualitative, and then it's going to have more, um, like in your Instagram, they can also be a way to share people's testimonials and just show like, okay, there's a picture. How did people feel about it? And then just, yeah, get like constant feedback from your community. That's going to be really important for you. So it's less about data maybe and more just about, yeah, seeing how people feel and how maybe their perceptions change. So even doing like an A-B test or like before and after can be something that you might want to pursue. Okay, all right. So the second challenge um, that you're facing is to, um, okay, so Actually, I'm going to ask you, Maribel, um, you have a challenge about finding the right team and also just inspiring other photographers to participate in your movement. So it's already 1042 or 1142 for you guys. So we may have room for just one more question. Um, which question would you like uh, 
advice on Mirabelle? You know, can I change it to the focusing question of the video, which was how to find balance with social impact work? Sure. Because I feel like I already have a good understanding for finding the right team based on the conversation with Valve, like reaching out to AU professors and students. And that's very convenient and accessible for me. So I think that'll be a good way. Um, and inspiring artists, um, if anyone has like a specific thought on that, on how to inspire other artists and photographers to participate with the movement, maybe tell, tell us afterwards. But I think since, since the founding of the project, there are like ups and downs of energy and that impacts the ability for the project to continue. So finding a balance and um, considering career and health and all these, you know, um, I have a fiance, so maybe when you plan in the future, it's a lot. <laughs> And if anyone in the call have experience balancing multiple things, like what are the kinds of things that really help? I'm going to ask, um, I'm going to just call someone out right now, but I'm going to ask uh, Kayla if she has any thoughts about this. Specifically on like the artist portion? No, like asking about how with um how do how do you balance everything uh, you, um, as a social entrepreneur? Um, I have shifted my focus this month because uh, I was so basically background. I went on a trip to India um, last month for a study abroad, doing a documentary with a nonprofit organization that focused on. Um, healthcare for those in poverty, since there is an issue with the healthcare system being a little corrupt. And um, when I was there, everybody was like very people and family focused. And um, so I've actually shifted to kind of taking a step back from everything and evaluating what my values are and really just focusing on like being with people. And I don't know if this is like a good answer for you, but sometimes taking off the pressure to, um, you know, like make an impact in what you want to make an impact on and just taking a break and relaxing can kind of in turn actually like help you understand what you want to balance more because everything is a choice. Like you can be with more people um, and like be with people more or, you know, you can focus more on your work and it's just kind of like taking that step back in order to find what you really value. That's just kind of my piece of advice there. Does anyone else have thoughts? Thank you. And I, and I get that, I just wanna say I get that because I, I recently had like a health thing where I just said I have to stop everything and just take care of my health. And that gave me a lot of energy for Love for Immigrants, which was weird because I was like, wow, why do I have all this energy? I was decided to take a break, but yeah. I think one thing that always helps me when I'm feeling like really burnt out and overwhelmed by like the amount of problems that um, I'm like the world is facing in general is just like, establishing that like this sort of sense of community and it's like just sometimes talking to a few people who get where you're coming from and you don't have to give them the full backstory and feel like you have to convince them that this is an issue and like get into all of the details um just like really refreshes my like um like passion for whatever the issue is and it's like simple um to just be like, oh, well, you just need to like talk to some people and take a break, maybe like take a break from the problem solving aspect. Like I really like that as well. And just kind of refresh why, like why you're so passionate about this issue. And I know this like for you is also a personal issue. Like you said that, um, you know, part of the background is like it's your family and all of that. So it's really easy, I think, to get burned out and bogged down by all of the all of the issues that we're facing as a as a society right now and so sometimes just finding that little that little sense of community and like not having to explain everything really really helps me when I'm having one of those like burnout days so kind of along the lines of what Kayla said and I guess just to add one more thing um 
it's so important sometimes like to take that step back and like not feel like you have to um fix everything or like you have to understand like okay i'm gonna dedicate 30 percent of my time to family and 25 percent of my time to this but um to just kind of like go with the flow of what you're feeling and listen to what you're feeling um and not reject that as um like oh well i'm not working hard enough or i'm not doing enough of this and like oh look this is kind of falling apart i need to pay more attention to this and just to like be able to observe everything um without needing to like dabble in it all and just like when you're in that space it's a lot easier to decide hey i really want to focus on this i think uh to add one point from my and Siwar's experience working together on a project all the time. I think part of it is also getting to know your own patterns and how you usually function because you, everyone has highs and lows. And if you go through it enough, you start to understand where you get burned out and why. And you start developing small mechanisms to kind of cut things before you get to the point where you actually burned out. So for us, we learned how to take strategic breaks that even before we feel we need a break, we just place them and force them to kind of make sure that we don't reach the point of absolutely burning out, both as creatives and as the just the part of work that we need to do. Because when you're doing a lot of work that takes a lot of mental effort, as well as actual effort of doing and doing things, you end up kind of totally exhausted to the point where when you get to your own life, you feel like you don't have the energy either to think or do anything. So having small activities that also are kind of mental or effort or effort activities that you enjoy and that you force yourself to not neglect throughout your work, I think also helps. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, adding to that point, um, like for me, uh, I had set a timeline for myself that until the time I was 30, like 30 was the time when I would finally be able to, you know, like enjoy more with life and like finally be financially stable and like um, have like, yeah, the goals were supposed to, I mean, they're supposed to be there, but they were like going to change and be evolve a little bit more. Um, but I mean, I'm 24 now, so that was like seven. It was, when I set the goal, it was like seven years of um, really sprinting and everything that I did, and then burning out, sprinting, burning out, and it would that would be every other week where I would burn out. Um, and like I talked to like a therapist, and the therapist was like telling me that you're someone who needs adrenaline, like an adrenaline rush, um, to enjoy life. And then that was, that kind of um, snapped me out of it a little bit because it's not about, sometimes it's not about reaching your goals um, that like forces you to stretch yourself so thin where you end up snapping every single time. It's about like stepping back and being able to reflect on what your journey has for you right now, being able to learn from it, being able to slow down and understand it because if you go like five, six years with just like constantly burning out to make sure that you're achieving your goals and whatnot, um, you're not gonna enjoy it until it's there. And even then you're not, even at 30, if I had continued to do that, I would've been used to that lifestyle and there wouldn't have been a way to live. So it's not worth it. Like you have to put yourself first. Like Saja said, to listen to yourself um, and prevent that from happening. And we will have moments when we do burn out, but it's to a point where you can limit that more than you think. Um, and you can draw like a line in the sand to make sure that you're not going to be able to, like you know what your limits are and that's a way for you to understand yourself a little bit more. So it's always about like meditation, self-reflection, stepping back. Sometimes um, like the Italians have a saying of like, there's a beautiful there's a beautiful art to doing nothing and they don't under understand Americans in the way that we put our work above everything else and to a point like you don't have to go to the ex all like total extreme but 
Um, it's good to put the person before the work at most times. Great, great, yeah. Yeah, I think um, I'm glad you mentioned too about speaking to a therapist and, and finding out what works for you. Um, I think many times we talk about these things a little bit separate, um, but you know, for social entrepreneurs, I think when I was in Tanana Ashoka, they mentioned like there was a high divorce rate among them and something they didn't really express before um, when people are deciding to become social entrepreneurs or in any really like social impact space, there's could be this personal downside, which is really what I'm getting to here. Um, and I'm just, you know, grateful for the advice because I have my own challenges mentally to, to deal with as well. Like the distractibility that I have shows up in my work, which Sewar and Saja have mentioned. Um, and instead of having stories of people constantly on my Instagram, I have stories of other organizations doing great work uh, as well. So, um, you know, I'm glad I'm glad to hear to hear everybody's input on this. So we have two minutes left. Um, does anyone have any last thoughts, questions, comments before we wrap up? Going once, going twice. Maybe this would just be a good time for Maribel to do a little shameless self-promotion and tell mm -hmm. tell us where we should find things if we don't already know or where um, viewers can find the campaign and such. Yes. So let me go back to the slideshow, something that I skipped. Hopefully it won't take too long. Um, okay. That's my voiceover. So my big ask is for you all at the end of this video uh, to fill out a survey which to get some of your input. Um, that's how I'm really getting my understanding of the impact uh, Love for Immigrants is making. Uh, I guess it's not here. I think it's here. Um, this is how the survey looks. I can send you the link. Um, and any of our listeners, too. Um, maybe we can put the link um, in the bio section or something. Uh, additionally, if you are able to visit our website at loveforimmigrants.com, uh, it's all together, um, Lord Caves, and four with the number four. And there you can find stories, uh, information about how to get involved, uh, and feel free to contact us. So we also have an Instagram page, which I don't have up here right now. It's also Love for Immigrants. Um, and please follow us as well and share any uh, stories that you captured yourself or any information you'd like to share. Um, well, I guess I had this if we had time, which we may or may not. Um, these were the other two local options. Um, and most people pick the first one. So if you have any ideas about which logo inspired you the most or which we thought was more relevant, please let us let us know. So these are the two other logos. Thank you so much. Okay, so the three asks were filling out a survey, visiting Love for Immigrants. Um, the website and then also Instagram and then um, just uh, giving input on which logos people resonate with the most right right okay cool. and that you can find on Instagram as well I'll post it again awesome okay all right we have to wrap up but thank you ladies all ladies today on the call by the way pretty cool um, <laughs> thank you ladies for joining us today um, and Mirabel I hope that um, you receive some in, like valuable input that you can execute on with the community um, please keep us updated like um, we have an email chain or I have to make an email chain I'll make an email chain for us um, 
uh, where we can keep in touch and just let us know like how you're evolving in your journey. And then um, I'm sure some people from the social good community are always like happy to see how um, a fellow community member is doing their work. So um, yeah, thank you everyone for joining today.